yeah, Matt, can you tell us about the why we're uh, out here today in the parking lot of Canadian Tire? So this is the sixth annual National Drive Electric Week in Regina. Basically, this event is all about interacting with the general public uh, to promote the adoption of electric vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of myths and misinformation that are out there in the general public, and so we just like to educate people and give them an opportunity to get behind the wheel of a car and see what an electric vehicle is all about. Um, and can you give us a little background on the uh, uh, SEDA? Uh, sure. Uh, so our group was formed about four years ago. Uh, we saw there is a significant deficit of electric vehicle infrastructure, such as chargers, uh, in the province of Saskatchewan. Uh, we also found out that there was a lot of misinformation that was being circulated, and uh, so we would like to correct that and get the real facts out about how great these cars are, and uh, also promote uh, charging infrastructure so people can drive around. Victor, uh kind of mentioned some like, myths and stuff, that misconceptions that people might have about uh, electric vehicles. Uh, what are some of those and how can you kind of debunk those? Uh, sure. Uh, so I'd say one of the biggest ones is that electric vehicles don't work in the winter time, uh, and that's not true. Uh, actually, electric vehicles are probably the best winter cars, uh, just because they start every time, they've got much less moving parts that uh, don't create as much friction and things uh, when it is minus 50. And uh, the cars run very hot, uh, they provide great heat, uh, great traction control systems, and so on. Uh, the second biggest myth is that electric vehicles are not good for the environment. Uh, that's also been proven to be a lie also. Uh, even SAS Power uh, did a study and they found that the carbon emissions from the electric vehicle in Saskatchewan, despite our carbon intensive power grid, is actually 30% less emitting uh, than its equivalent internal combustion engine vehicle. And that actually also includes the uh, carbon footprint of manufacturing the battery. Uh, and probably the third would be the lack of charging. People think that there's nowhere to plug your car in. Uh, truth be told, 95% of people that own an electric vehicle, they charge their car at home. Uh, so the public charging thing really isn't that big of an issue unless you're going on a road trip. Uh, in that case, we've got uh, the Canadian Tire uh, Flow Charging Network as well as the Tesla Supercharger Network. And um, those are more than adequate to get us around. In fact, uh, people are driving their electric vehicles now long distance all over Canada and the United States, typically charging anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes at, at most. So, so it's significant for I guess, uh, what would you say to maybe people that uh, maybe it's a bit uh, too apt on the subject, but I know some people might be scared away, oh, like electric cars are so much more expensive, like a Tesla, for example, uh, what would you say to those kind of people? Yeah, so with an electric vehicle, there certainly is a price premium, especially with the brand new cars. Uh, however, the cost of ownership of an electric vehicle is significantly cheaper than an internal combustion engine car. Uh, for example, at home, I only pay about $30 a month for power versus over $200 a month for fuel that I was paying previously. Uh, there's basically next to little to none as far as maintenance uh, on my car as well. Uh, they've actually done studies comparing a Tesla Model 3 uh, to a Toyota Corolla and actually in the long run the Tesla Model 3 is cheaper to own and operate than the Toyota Corolla ones. So the, the long term cost benefits in the electric fit are for sure. I guess um, you kind of mentioned it like uh, I guess maybe what are some of kind of the biggest differences that you see over time with like, uh, like you said costs obviously long run electric is more cost beneficial like um, what exactly kind of leans into that? Um, like what are the biggest differences between an ICE and an electric vehicle? Yeah, so with a gasoline car, obviously you have an exhaust system, you've got spark plugs, regular oil changes, uh, brakes to be replaced every so often, and not to mention expensive fuel that skyrockets every long weekend. Uh, with an electric vehicle, our brakes are regenerative brakes, so basically it's the car braking for you and not the brake pads. Uh, as well, um, there's much less moving parts, uh, like there's typically less than 30 moving parts in an electric vehicle versus over 200 for a gas car. Um, so at some point, all those moving parts are going to break down and eventually we'll need replacement. Being an electric vehicle is so much simpler, uh, if those parts don't exist, if we don't have to uh, So with that in mind, yeah, the, the, the electric vehicle uh, wins in the long term just because of all of those moving parts that it does not have. That's pretty much all I really had for you today, unless there's anything you care to add uh, or finish off uh, about the event or about the organization. Oh, well, well, sure. Um, well, I would just say uh, we're also here on behalf of, uh, to celebrate the uh, Canadian Tire Charging Network that's being built across Saskatchewan. 
Uh, there's 12 chargers that are being built out as we speak and should be completed later on this fall. Uh, this is a huge benefit to electric vehicle owners, especially in the smaller rural centers, uh, because they will have a charger at their Canadian Tire for road trips and whatnot. Uh, as well, uh, we've got the Co-op Connect Network, uh, Petro Canada Fast Charging Network, and the Tesla Supercharger Network. So uh, there is plenty of infrastructure to go around. There's just a few uh, empty spots that we're looking to have filled. And Sun Country. Sun Country Highways as well. Um, I should mention, Sun Country Highways is the pioneer of basically all the electric vehicle charging uh, in Canada. Um, actually, there's a gentleman over there who drove an electric vehicle across Canada in the dead of winter back in 2010, I believe it was. And uh, it was monumental. It had never, ever been done before, especially in the dead of winter. And uh, seems uh, tense. Uh, so be sure to go to Chapel 10.